Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is about momentum. And you all know inherently what momentum is. If you're a football player, then you know when uh, the guy that's coming at you has more momentum than you. Either he's bigger than you or he's running faster than you. But if he's got more momentum than you, you know that you're probably in trouble. Likewise with cars and trucks. You know that a truck traveling at 50 miles per hour has more momentum than a smart car traveling at 50 miles per hour. Now you may not know exactly what momentum is, but you know what happens when both of them try to stop. It takes the truck a whole lot longer to stop than it takes the, the smart car time to stop. So you know what momentum is. Well, in terms of physics, I define momentum as inertia in action or inertia in motion. Remember, inertia is that characteristic of an object that makes it want to resist a change. It's a creature of habit. It wants to resist a change. If it's at rest, it wants to stay in rest. If it's moving, it wants to keep moving in the straight line at the same speed. It doesn't want to change. And so that's what momentum talks about. It doesn't talk about the at rest piece, but it does talk about the in motion piece. Momentum, which by the way, has the symbol of P. I'm not sure why the symbol is P, no clue. I just know that the symbol for momentum is P, the abbreviation is P, and that's mathematically determined by taking the mass of an object and multiplying it by its velocity. Now notice I said velocity, not speed. So in the back of your mind, you should start thinking vectors, and we'll get to that later. But I want you to make sure you know that it's mass times velocity. So momentum is simply mass times velocity. You're multiplying two things together. A moving object has a large momentum if it has a large mass, like the truck, or it has a large velocity, or it has both. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can get a large momentum. And it depends, all of it depends on mass and velocity. So those are the two things we're looking at. Impulse is a cousin of momentum. Impulse is a change in momentum. It measures how much momentum changes. And again, I just want to call your attention to the little triangle, which means change. That's the Greek letter delta, and it means change in something. So if momentum changes, then the mass or the velocity must have changed. That's the only way you can get that momentum to change. So you have a ball rolling. If its momentum changes, it's probably not that it got more massive or less massive. What probably happened is its velocity changed. So if momentum changes, a lot of times you have to look at change in velocity. And what happens with change in velocity? What is that called? Well, a change in velocity, if you remember, is called acceleration. Acceleration. And there's a way to get acceleration. It's called a force. So if you're going to have something accelerating, and by the way, Slowing down is called acceleration as well. It's negative acceleration, sometimes referred to as deceleration. But it's a change in velocity, which means there's been some kind of force that's acted on an object. Change in momentum, or impulse, depends on two things. The force that acts on an object. The larger the force, the larger the change in momentum. Also, what's really important is the length of time the force acts. So if a force acts longer, it's going to have a different impact than if it acts shorter. So if you apply a force for a short period of time, you're going to get a change in momentum. That's pretty obvious. But if you apply a force for a long period of time, momentum is going to change more. Okay? It's going to change more. Force times the time interval is how you mathematically calculate moment. I'm sorry, impulse. Force times the time interval is how you calculate impulse. Force times time equals impulse. But I also said that impulse was equal to a change in momentum. And we can represent change in momentum like this. Delta meaning change in mass times velocity. Mass times velocity is momentum. So what we're going to address next time is what happens when we set this change in mass times velocity equal to force times time. But for right now, it's okay if you just know those things.